All right, in this video, we're going to see how to conduct a hypothesis test when you have two populations and you want to test the difference between the two population means. Uh, this is a very generic problem we have here. Uh, we just have a first population and a second population. Uh, the first population will have subscript 1 for the different values for parameters and statistics. Um, and the second population will have the subscript 2 for its parameters and statistics. Uh, the claim is the alternative and the level of significance is 0 0.005. All right. And so the claim here is that the population mean from population 1 is less than the population mean from population 2. So we're obviously going to test this by collecting some sample data and we get a sample size, a sample mean, and a sample standard deviation from each population. And from there, we can conduct the test. Now, I'm going to do this in Excel. And with Excel, we're going to rewrite the hypotheses in terms of the difference of the two population means. Um, these are equivalent. The, the population means being equal is the same as their difference being 0. And population mean 1 being less than population mean 2 means the difference is less than 0. And so we can then use that 0 in our calculations. This is a left-tailed test since that inequality sign points to the left. And it is the t-distribution that we'll use since we do not know the population standard deviations, just the sample standard deviations. All right, I'm going to put in the level significance as 0.005. And we're going to put in the sample statistics from sample 1 and sample 2. So uh, sample mean is 86.6. Sample size is 25. And sample standard deviation from population 1 is 18.4. All right, looking at sample 2, sample size is 13. The sample mean is 88.8. .8, and the standard deviation is 8.1. All right, so I have Excel calculating the point estimate, which is just subtracting those sample means. And I have it finding the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which, if you remember from having a single population, was just the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Uh, we have something similar here. Um, this formula, square root of sort of a weighted average of these standard deviations. Um, and they're squared and there's a square root, so that sort of cancels. And so you effectively have the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, but in a way that combines both sample sizes and both sample standard deviations. Uh, so that formula is then turned into this Excel formula here. And the test statistic just puts that as the denominator, where you put the point estimate over that. So there's your test statistic. And the degrees of freedom follows this complicated formula. Notice that the numerator here looks a lot like the standard error. If you take, if you get rid of the square root and you square it, which is equivalent to squaring twice or an exponent of 4, it's a lot like the standard error to the fourth power in the numerator. And that's the way I calculated it here, just to make it a little easier. So see, so start with that standard deviation of the sampling distribution to the fourth power. And then the denominator is exactly how you see it there. It just used the sample sizes and sample standard deviations. Now I do have this being rounded um, because when we use the t distribution in Excel, it wants a whole number for the degrees of freedom. And this formula will not always give you a whole number, so I rounded it. All right. Then we just pick which one of these p-values we want, and they all basically use the t-distribution um, with the t-dist function. Now, they look so complicated because the t-dist function wants to take in a test statistic, right, x, and it wants that to be positive. So if your test statistic is negative, you need to 
switch it to its positive version, and then subtract that from 1. And so that's what's set up here, is if the test statistic happens to be negative, this makes sure you don't get an error message. right? So there's the one for the right-tailed test, um, and then here's the one for the left-tailed test. And then with the two-tailed test, you don't have to worry about it as much. Just take the absolute value and then put in two for the number of tails on the tdist function. Uh, we can also qualify this with a uh, t-test graph generator. Um, so again, our, our correct p-value is this one here, the 0 0.306536, the left-tailed one. Um, we can actually get that from going to our p-value graph generator, the t-distribution one, goes to imathas.com slash tools slash norm. Uh, click on t-distribution, right? And for the sample size, uh, where we have multiple samples, so I would just use degrees of freedom plus one, so maybe 36. Um, and then we pick left-tailed, and then you can put in the test statistic which is negative 0 0.510226, oops, and then you can have it draw that for you. Um, and you know, it, it puts the p-value right on the graph, but it also shows it to you, which is what I really like about that. So we can kind of get rid of this and paste in this one to go along with it. Uh, but yeah, see that p-value matches up. 0 0.3065, 0 0.3065, if you round to four decimal places. So that's going to be our answer, 0 0.3065. Uh, that's obviously greater than the significance level by quite a bit. Um, remember, what the p-value is, is the probability that the null hypothesis is true and that the sample data is true. And so when that probability is really low, uh, and we trust our sample data, we dismiss the null hypothesis and support the alternative. When that value is really high, that we have no reason to do that, and so we fail to reject the null in this case, right? We don't ever accept it. We fail to reject the null um, because there's plenty of chance, 30% chance here uh, that the null could be true. That is good enough. Um, so there is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim. Remember, the claim is the alternative. By failing to reject the null, we failed to support the claim, and uh, that's what it says here. Failing to support the claim that the pop first population mean is less than the second population mean. So either they're really close to being the same, or the first population is more than the second population. Um, we just put that in here. Um, we uh, failed to reject the null since the p-value is greater than alpha. That's right. Uh, the sample data does not support the claim. Uh, that the first population is less than the second. So we have our decision and our conclusion in there in our graph, and uh, we are uh, all set.